What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we are back on dock. That's right. Our wide body DeLorean that we took to SEMA last year, got top 10 Battle of the Builders. And we've been doing a ton of content since then, upgrading this car and bringing it from just a concept, turning it into a road legal resto mod that is a complete and total supercar killer. Now, that being said, if you haven't seen any of the other episodes on this car, go ahead and hit the link below. We have a new playlist for this car coming up where you can watch all the episodes leading up to this point so you can get caught up to the journey of this car. And also, a lot of you guys are not subscribed. I see you, I know you're watching the episodes, just hit the subscribe button, get caught up on all these episodes and stay up to date. We're trying to build a good community here who loves 80s and 90s cars like this, but we also do cool cars like that. Last episode on the GTX, we went ahead and put in the Hellcat engine. We did a Whipple supercharger, we did all the engine bay and everything like that. But anyway, I digress. So in the past, we were flamed just a little bit on the internet about the fitment of the front bumper on our old DeLorean here. And as you can see, it's not so bad here, but pretty bad over here. And the urethane front bumpers on these cars fit like absolute poo poo caca. And the reason for that is because this is 40 year old urethane that was kind of rushed out of the factory to mate up with the stainless steel body panels. So from the factory, the DeLoreans came with a urethane front bumper and they came with a urethane back bumper. I threw this on last episode when we did the turbo system. I'm not too upset with the back bumper. This needs us a little bit of adjustment and it's probably gonna get a fresh paint job when we're ready to actually put the new body kit back on the car. But I figured in between that time, we will go ahead and show you guys what our solution is for this front bumper. So let's get into that now. Now, a lot of people don't understand or don't realize that the DeLorean Motor Company is actually alive and well, and they exist in Texas. Now, you can go on DeLorean.com and you can order almost every nut and bolt for a DeLorean. And the reason for that is because Steven Wynn, the owner of DeLorean Motor Company, bought all of the original leftover parts for the DeLorean when the DeLorean Motor Company went out of business. And when that happened, they had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of parts in order to continue the production run past 82. In comes DeLorean Motor Company of Houston, Texas. And since then, they've been updating or upgrading a lot of the parts for the DeLorean. Now, since then, I've been wanting to showcase this product for a long time because this, I think, is one of the biggest Achilles heels besides the engine. And what's in this box is something that's really gonna bring this to the 21st century and also fix a lot of the fitment issues that we have with the front of the car. So let's get this thing open and see what we got. All right guys, if you guessed fiberglass front nose, you were right. Look at this thing. So the big problem with DeLorean front noses is these eyelids, they call them right here. And what happens is the sun beats down on this. So this eyebrow right here warped like crazy. Did one of these numbers. And then also out here, your body line was extremely something to be desired. Let's just say that. You also had warping across here and the urethane itself just all around was very poor. The urethane back then was not how it is today. Now, this is expected. You have these marks right here from when it was pulled out of the mold. It was probably a two piece mold to allow for this flange right here. But the cool thing about this, since it's fiberglass, is any inconsistencies we have here with the body line we're gonna be able to fix with additional fiberglass and or duraglass to be able to get the seam laser straight, which is gonna be awesome. So that right there is gonna fix a majority of the reason why we're doing this. I've adjusted this front bumper a million times and I can't get rid of that. But once the fiberglass front bumper is on, I'm also gonna lose this. See how it goes flat over here and then it comes up over here? That's just, this is the urethane. I can't do anything about that. And also, once Tyler gets done with our production body kit, we're getting rid of the 3D printed body kit as we saw in the last episode. Once the fiberglass body kit comes, that fiberglass underpiece is gonna get panel bonded to this fiberglass piece. So then essentially the entire front bumper will be one piece fiberglass. And then we'll do some duct work finally for the radiator and get all that super dialed in. So that's gonna be a future episode, super cool. So first things first, obviously we gotta get the front bumper off the car. I'm not even gonna try to pull these headlights out first. So let's get the front bumper off, get the headlights out, and we'll see how this thing fits. All 
right guys, we got our old front bumper off, as you can see, and it is heavy. So our headlights, I forgot, we hardwired these in, so I had to cut them, made it a little hard to get off. But having it off the car, you can see, the, you know, this is a straight line. There should be no reason why that urethane bumper didn't fit. This looks like the hood needs to come forward a little bit to get this line perfect. Maybe a little bit on this side too. But I went ahead and tried to fit the fiberglass and this little triangle dude down in the corner. I need to shave that down uh, significantly. And uh, same with this side, the little triangle. So if I push it up against it, it's like a perfect mirror image of that fender. Before we had a huge gap. This needs to be dropped down a little bit so I need to trim inside there. And then on this side, when I push it in, look at that. Look at that. That's what we want. It's freaking perfect. So I gotta grind the back side of this down. I think what's hitting is right here. So this right here needs to get ground down. There's like this fat spot here. I'm gonna blend all this down nice and thin. Inside of here, I'm gonna grind all this down so it's all flush with the base. So once I get this all uh, flushed in, get this all blended down, then I could start matching holes and start popping holes in this thing to get it to bolt down. I almost have this thing dialed. We went ahead and trimmed the inside. We're touching down here, but we still have a gap up here. And it looks like I gotta open up the hinge on either side. So if I open up the hinge on either side, yeah, here too, I gotta deepen it a little bit and I can get it this tight. But this right here, man, what a difference. It is huge. Yeah, it's flush. Before I had like a quarter inch over here, a quarter inch over here that was too tight. Dude, it looks so much better. It looks so good. So I'm gonna take it off right now, trim it a little bit more. We'll test fit it one more time. And then we'll see about drilling our holes and getting this thing bolted up. All right guys, the bumper fits perfect. The next step is to start adjusting the fenders. It's flush here. This looks good, flush, flush, flush. And then here it starts dropping down. So this corner of the hood needs to be lifted up. So the hinge itself is slotted. So you have these bolts, four bolts here. So you loosen these four bolts and you can slide the whole hinge up and you can do it with the bumper attached. Same over here too. So you have your four, hinge, four bolts right here and you can adjust the hinges and get all your gaps right. So once we have the hood all situated and it's looking good, then I think we're ready to start drilling holes. Ooh, look at that. Man, that's perfectly flush. So now I can just tighten it up. Completely flush. So all the way across. We're a little high over here, but you got these 80s panels, man. They don't fit for nothing. They didn't fit when they were new. So it's like, you gotta have to split hairs. If I get a nice flat edge all the way across, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, we're gonna tighten these up and then we're gonna start drilling some holes.
All right, guys, we're almost there to start fitting our headlights. Back in the early 80s, um, auto manufacturers were pretty much tied into a certain headlight arrangement. So it was the four by six headlight box, and they put that on everything. But all the old early 80s cars looked pretty much the same. For the taillights on the DeLorean, we just took a block of uh, acrylic and cut this grid pattern out. And as you can see, it's completely flat. So if you're using the acrylic glass, we were able to mimic a lens. So we polished that, painted the inside black, and then Steve from Skeptic Innovation, Steve Mullins, inserted the LED light inside of a groove that we then cut out the back. And we used a, a CNC routing table to actually make these lenses. Comment below if you want to see that whole process, because we could probably duplicate that for you guys and you could see exactly how to do it. But going back to the headlights on a DeLorean, the DeLorean originally had these two headlights like this, boom, boom. It's very iconic from the Back to the Future movies and also from the actual car. I did not want to keep the original headlight buckets because I wanted to make this car look like it was 1981, but built in 2030. And so we came up with these. So these are based on the originals. We used a 3D printed bucket. So we 3D printed this bucket. The back is aluminum. So we have an aluminum backing plate. And then we have these two acrylic lenses. And then Steve put these LED lights on the back of the actual lens. And similar to like a 720S, I wanted the lower half to be like a grill where we can put our actual headlight in. The lower lens down here, this is all LED lights and these are extremely bright. So when you hit the headlights, these turn on and then these are just your driving lights. This was our solution for the new futuristic headlights for the DeLorean. Now, the headlights and taillights on any car will change the entire look of the car. For this one, we ended up keeping the dual headlight pattern, which is kind of like a nod to the originals. Now we have the fun of trying to get them to fit into our new front bumper. I did try to dry fit this before with uh, the camera off, and I noticed that I'm having a little bit of fitment issues with the fact that this front bumper is urethane. You see how much flex you have? And this is fiberglass, so there's no flex. So when I try to put the headlight in there, it just stuck. All right, we got one headlight fitted. It is tight. It is such a tight fit that it, I don't even know if that's even gonna come out of there now. So I ended up having to shave on the backside. Yeah, I ground the glue off on the top and bottom edge so that it can, it slid in this way and then at the last little bit, I just popped it in. So we have some warpage right here from the heat. I might end up having to scan this opening because we scanned the opening of the urethane front bumper that had all kinds of imperfections in it. And maybe I'll have Tyler from Fortune Auto Design 3D print me another set of buckets that are gonna fit this bumper. So we'll probably do that in a future episode. But for now, we got our holes drilled for our heart, our uh, grill to be able to fit. And looks pretty good. These headlights are so cool because they just look they look like DeLorean headlights, but they're, you can definitely tell they're futuristic. They just came out awesome. I'm just so happy with these headlights. They do need a little bit more love with the final design, but for right now, this is looking awesome against the fiberglass and they fit really, really good. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side now, get the bumper on and see what this thing looks like. things to talk about on a 30 plus year old car fitting brand new parts on it that are considered bodywork. So we got our fiberglass front bumper and as you can see it has solved our gap issue here. We had a giant gap. You can see all the hardware underneath it. Now that we have this dialed in I'm feeling a lot more confident. I spent a lot of time with the front end getting the hood fit right before we had this huge lip on the hood. The hood actually was lifted like a half inch over this line and it was just horrible. We tightened up right here, everything's nice and tight. The only thing that we have that is going to need further adjustment in the near future is the distance on the fender on the body line. So you see right here we're flush. So I, I don't wanna go any higher and right here we're not flush. So if I was gonna go higher here to get this flush, 
then I'd have a big lip right here. So I'd rather have this lip here. So what we'll end up doing when we go to paint the front bumper, we'll probably tape off the actual stainless steel and we're gonna fill this out with probably uh, Duraglass. Duraglass is a type of body filler that actually has fiberglass strands in it. So you can use it as a nice building agent if you wanna reshape something a little thicker than just scratches and cuts like what you do with Bondo or something like that. So I think my best bet is to go from this point right here and just come very gradually up to meet that from here, very gradually up to meet that and make this completely laser straight perfect. And then this little thing right here, there's a little gap right here, the lower balance that comes across here for the lower half of the body kit will actually hold that together. So we'll do that right there before we go to paint and then we'll do the same thing on this side. Same deal. You know, old technology, they weren't perfect and this is honestly one of the best fitting front bumpers I've seen on a DeLorean. So next episode guys, we're going to be continuing on the upgrades on, on dock, finalizing some things with the AC system as well as the brakes. We're going to be making all new rear brackets for uh, four piston Willwood calipers in the rear to match with our six piston calipers in the front. We're also gonna be buttoning up the interior as you can see, it needs some attention. Uh, after Chris did all the wiring for the power windows and the lights, we have to put all that back together. So we'll be probably doing that in the next episode. And then also, if you guys were interested in seeing how the scanning process works, the next episode is gonna be for you because we're gonna scan the whole underside of the back of the car and send it off to Tyler at Fortune Auto Design to start designing our rear diffuser to be able to tie the whole body kit back together and get those turbos up and tucked so that we can get the back end of the car finished out the way I've always envisioned it. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for all the support. We got 5,000 subs now. Last DeLorean episode hit 60,000 views. We're on our way to the top. So thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the comments. And also check out mosteriautocraft.com, our website where we have all of our builds there. We have all of the latest news, what's going on with the company. And also some merch will be available soon. Still working on that. Like I said, we're a very small operation. So comment below, let me know what kind of shirts you guys wanna see, hats, whatever, and uh, we'll try to put that out there. So we'll see you guys on the next episode. That's a wrap for this one. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. We'll see you later.